Hey folks, we're back with another episode of Three Men and an Anime. Huzzah! Yay! It's episode 40! Yep, episode 40. Uh -huh. <laughs> this week, uh, I'm joined as always by my good friends and co-hosts, Eric Carlson and Gav Leaf. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing alright. Cannot complain. Kinda. Well, I can. I, I always can. I can always complain. Yeah, you can always complain. <laughs> Come on, man. I was gonna say, but you know, goddamn oxygen-rich environment, sustaining <laughs> life. I mean, Eric can always complain he doesn't have a Gundam. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's bullshit, by the way. <laughs> Uh, anyways, <clears throat> this week, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me, uh, we'll be covering uh, my most recent selection, uh, because it's my turn this time, and I decided to keep, as you know, we, as I mentioned at the end of the last episode, I decided to keep on the trashy series train that we've been on for a little bit here, uh, sort of complete the trilogy, as it were, uh, <laughs> and uh, I decided to do No Game, No Life, um, a series Produced by Madhouse, uh, produced by City of Madhouse, who are jerks and don't bother to finish their stories, and I hate them. Grr. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, No Game to Life uh, is twelve episode series. Uh, came out in twenty fourteen, so it's now four years old. Mm -hmm. Keep waiting for that second season. <laughs> yeah, it'll totally happen at some point. It's pro it's it's basically the stereotype of Madhouse. It's a twelve episode season that didn't get a sequel. Yeah, mm. uh, it's based everything on, they do. It's based on a light novel series that is still ongoing. Uh, there are ten volumes in it. <laughs> I got Jeez. nothing. There's more material, is what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> at any rate, uh, no game, no life. Uh, Okay, so let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. Uh, yes, there's a lot of fan service. Um, some oh, of which no. involves the 11-year-old Shiro, which is really unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, other than that, it's really not as bad as some people make it out to be. I have seen a lot of re responses online, and you can just, just fucking mention this show. And people it's freak like, out, yeah. Yeah, it, it's like the, you know, oh my god, um, Evangelion is overhyped, Evangelion is underhyped. Argument. You know, people people start that argument without even fucking watching the series. And, yep. yeah, you, you you mentioned this show, and it's, oh my god, it's lolly porn shit. It's not nope. by any stretch. Nope. Yes, there's, like as Peter said, there is a little bit of... I wouldn't even say fan service. It's more that there is fan service in the show, and she gets dragged in a little bit with that. Yes, but it's not really actively focused on her. Uh, sometimes it is. Sometimes it is, <laughs> but it's not. It has an undeserved reputation, is what we're saying. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other sort of big sort of negative reputation it's got is. It being sort of there being sort of incest baiting in it, uh, which there just isn't. No, like no. that is just fa I. That is someone who is really not paying attention. <laughs> um, the main characters of the show are Shiro, who's the 11, aforementioned eleven-year-old, eleven-year-old girl, and Sora, her eighteen-year-old brother. Mm -hmm. um, Shiro does have a crush on her big brother. Right. Sora yeah, loves his little sister. <laughs> Sora loves his little sister the way a brother loves his little sister. Mm. He does. He he explicitly says on at least on multiple occasions. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, they're also completely cracked people with um, yes. or more than a little codependent on each other. They are, but that's a there's. There's just any sexual tension between the two. None. No, it, it's more that Shiro is so, like, withdrawn and, uh, you know, basically neither of these people can function in society. Um, mm. Shiro literally, if, well, it, either of them, if they're literally out of eyesight of each other, they both freak out. Mm. Because they don't know what the fuck's going on. They can't function by themselves. Yep. That kind of desperation to be together 
can be misread as romantic. It isn't. No. Not at all. It's it's a mental issue. Yes. They are damaged oh. people. But they are completely fucking insane. Let, let's not get this wrong. Oh, here. absolutely. They're both. They, they both require several decades worth of, of therapy here. Yeah. But it's it's very easy to dismiss it as as romantic, and it's not. Hmm. Yep. I just want. I wanted to get that out of the way, right, right off the fucking bat, because it's it's an important thing. Uh, in I mean, my it, like, opinion, like, because... like like you said, um, Shiro at one point, you know. Yeah, it's a young girl has a crush on her big brother. And Shiro says in no uncertain terms, A, you're my sister. B, you're 11. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sora says that, yeah. Yeah, he, he says that in no uncertain terms. No, 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 no. It's like episode one or maybe two. two. It's episode two. Yeah. yeah. This is in response to basically, basically, you know, because he's got in the situation where he's sort of, you know, attracted to another character who's female, and his age, and does something. And Sora's like, you always say you didn't need anything else other than me. And he's like, I was putting on a front! <laughs> a man has needs, sexual needs, and romantic needs, and sexual needs, and social needs, and sexual needs. Also, you are Levin and my sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, no. <laughs> As I said, Sora loves Shiro deeply. They they are very close siblings, yeah. but it really is just that. Um, so I, I wanted to hammer that bit out of the way to begin with. Uh, so yeah, they're uh, a pair of they're a pair of neats. They are or hikakamori if you want to use the ja the Japanese term for it. Um, they are brilliant, um, and they basically stay in their room. All the time. Mm -hmm. They do not interact with anybody other than themselves except online. And even then, they mostly don't talk to people online. They just kick everybody's ass, ass at games. Yeah. Everybody's ass. And every game. And every game. There is not a game in, a game that they play that, that they... There's not a game that exists that they are not brilliant at. Um, they've basically formed a... They've become sort of an urban legend online because... Whenever they've got, they, whenever they you know have to insert a name, they leave the name, name field blank, and people know of this group called Blank, who basically show up in games and just completely dominate them. Yeah, it, it opens up with like a typical MMO um, <clears throat> um, PvP arena. Yeah, yeah, like Log Horizon style sort of thing, um, with mages and wizards casting shit at each other and trying to work out strategies, and there's just four like unbeatable like. They're just dashing around and they're just wrecking shit. To the point where the mage on the other team is like, okay, we need to at least fucking do something to these guys. I'm going to use a cheat. And she does so and misses. Because these guys are that good, they realized that their opponent was about to cheat and countered that cheat. <coughs> Like, prepared for it. Yep. For, prepared for something they could not possibly have known or prepared for. Yes. And then it cuts back, and it's literally just these two, a mouse each, in, you know, in each hand, controlling four characters between them. Yep. Yep. Until um, Shiro starts to get bored and hands the other two mice to Sora. He, try, he starts controlling them with his feet. Well, she doesn't get bored. She's decided, <laughs> she, it's, it's got, she's got bored. She's like, yeah, I need to get some sleep. I've been awake for five days. <laughs> well, there is that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting, to, I'm starting to, to see the psychotic break from sleep depth coming. So here, yeah. you do it. I'm crashing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they uh, and we have a little introspection from Sora about how the world fucking sucks, mm. especially for people like them. Because you know, you know, they they proceed to go on to you know the the rules don't make any goddamn sense. There's seven six plus billion people playing. Uh, everybody doing what they want, not knowing what the rules are. Uh, if you do too well, people get annoyed with you. You don't do well enough, people get annoyed with you. <laughs> this is a stupid, crappy game. The balance agree, sucks. It's just terrible. <laughs> yeah. It's pay to win. Yeah. 
to a large degree, yeah. Um, <laughs> and he sort of managed to get through the, the their, their sort of. There's a wonderful line where it's like, you know, you're play the cleric. <laughs> you know, if you go away, you put everything. I mean, if you, if, you know, that happens. You know, people, other, everyone else will die. By everyone else, I mean me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there's a another little, there's another exchange about you know Shiro basically busting out some very fancy, expensive rations that she has that she's she's eating, which are apparently also tasty. And Sora comments about like, yeah, now these are really expensive and quite good. But you know, you know, if, you know, if you're looking for a cost to benefit ratio in terms of what what you need to survive, we what we as gamers need to survive, we just need to fuel our brains really. And all that needs is glucose, so white bread is the most efficient way to do that. And Cheryl's like, I'm 11 and I need nutrients. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the efficiency dump, but um, I'm 11. <laughs> still, the growth is still something I worry about. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, after this big match is over, uh, Sora receives an email, and Cheryl's like... What was that? And Sora's like, I don't know. She's like, maybe it's an email from a friend. And Sora's like, I don't have those. We don't have friends. Do you know us? <laughs> but they read the email, and it's someone basically who, A, notes that they're, that they're siblings, that blank are siblings. B, you know, wants to challenge them to a game. And gives them a website link to this a website. It's called Disport.com. So they're like, okay. They're like, someone's challenging us to a game. Okay, sure. Let's click on this link. And chess. Boy, they look underwhelmed by the chess being presented by chess being presented to them. It's old eighties video chess as well, so it's like yeah, it's classic. Not even yeah. fancy. It's just but it, but it's it's chess. So you know, Chiro pulls Sora pulls Chiro up into his lap, and she she starts playing because this is her forte. Uh, they actually have, they, while they're both very good at virtually every game they play, they do very clearly end up, we, as you find in our course of the series, they each have their strengths and weaknesses when it comes to games. Uh, Sora is better at, Sora is capable of negotiating and talking with people. Uh. It, it, Sora is basically the strategist, while Shiro is the the calculator and mathematician. Yes. Yeah. Sora, Sora gets into to people's heads, and he, he knows how to read a, a cold read people. He, he's very good at that kind of shit. Yep. He's just, you know, broken. <laughs> well, Shiro is a an absolute genius. Yes. Like, like, give her anything that just that doesn't require any kind of human interaction, she's going to kick your ass at it. Yeah, she's just a extreme introvert. Yeah, as, as soon as you introduce any kind of, uh, of psychological game into it, she's boned, though. Yep. Um, but chess, well, you know, as she, as she puts it, chess is no different than tic-tac-toe. Which is a terrifying concept, honestly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so she's playing, and as Sora's watching, and she's, the computer, the, computer the, the opponent eventually makes a move that surprises Shiro, and so I was like, oh, wait a minute. You're not up against the computer here. That's a live opponent. All right. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for, the, for you know, live sort of, you know, irrational sort of traps that are trying to bait you into stuff, and you just do your thing. I'll, I'll keep, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for shit. And they end up winning. Um, and their opponent messages them and basically asks them what they think of the world, and they're like, this world really fucking sucks. You know, and he says, were you, do you think you were born to the wrong world? And, you know, what if there was a world where, you know, everything was like, you know, everything was decided by games and all, all this stuff and the rules the, with simple goals and everything was straightforward and all this stuff. And Shiro's like, Sora's like, yeah, if a world like that exists, then we were definitely born to the wrong world. And the opponent says, well, I agree with you completely and proceeds to suck them through their computer monitor. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Uh, and they wake, they, they find themselves basically like the, the room collapses into a featureless black box, which then opens, and they are, now they're falling through space. Um, well, through the atmosphere, falling towards the ground in this brightly multicolored, just stunning landscape all around. So here's, here's the thing. Every time the, they're in the real world or, or 
our world or, or having a flashback to it. Everything's done with their traditional black um, outlines. And it's also, it's, it's, the colors are also very washed out. Yeah, everything's very... Uh, as soon as you come into to Discord, everything's done in a red um, outline, and it's this pastel candy-colored lunacy for a color scheme. Yep. And it's gorgeous and very effective at, at driving home what's going on. Yep. And they are met in midair by this young boy with strange eyes and a stranger fashion sense. Named Tet. Uh, not that strange. I've seen kids that age try to dress themselves. Fair point. <laughs> also, I'm not sure kids that age applies to Tet, because, um... Tet's kids a god. Tet's a parent age. Tet's a parent age, yes. And uh, Tet's a god. Uh, and he proceeds to explain the deal with, with the world Discord. Uh, yes. this is, he is currently the only god in Discord. He is the one true god. That's because the pre the other true gods basically got all their... Paint, all their, all their all their, you know, their the races they were patrons of, and they got this gigantic war to fight for supremacy and dominancy. And Tet basically said, "Yeah, fuck that noise. I'm going to stay out of this." Uh, and they basically destroyed the world. And Tet, by by you know dint of being the only god who didn't participate and wasn't wiped out, technically won. <laughs> You know, an interesting game. The only winning move is not to play. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Ted basically looked at the, rem the remnants of the sentient species and basically said, okay, here's the deal, guys. Uh, we're going to... I will rebuild the world with you guys in it. That's fine. Um, things are going to work very differently because, you know, you guys claim you have wisdom. Uh, look at what it's brought. You guys are you guys are clearly morons, and everyone is like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was kind of a problem, and so Tet changed the, the rules of the world: murder and violence, and you know, all you know, sort of direct theft and all that sort of thing. Completely verboten. Can't do it. Everything is is, is impossible. It's impossible. Everything is run by the the, tw the ten pledges. Um, I gotta see if I can find them written down. Hang on a second. I should I should have had this up because um I can't remember them. Like, That's why I'm I'm seeing if I can find them. Yeah. Here we go. I think I got them. All right. Pledge one: All murder, war, and robbery is forbidden in this world. Pledge two: All conflicts in this world will be resolved through games. Pledge three. In games, each player will be will bet something they agree to is of equal value. Four. As long as it doesn't violate pledge three, anything may be bet and any game may be played. Pledge five. The challenged party has the right to decide the rules of the game. Pledge six. Any bets made in accordance with the pledges must be upheld. Pledge seven. Conflicts between groups will be conducted by designated representatives with absolute authority. Pledge 8. Being caught cheating during a game is grounds for an instant loss. Pledge 9. In the name of God, the previous rules may never be changed. Pledge 10. Let's all have fun and play together. Yeah, good luck enforcing that last one. <laughs> hmm. Yes, uh, until you actually find out what's actually going on. <laughs> right. Which, of course, Sora and Shiro figure out, because, you know... Because it's all a game, and they're eventually going to figure it out. Right. Now, one thing to note as well, when it says you can bet anything, you can bet anything. Yep. And all, all, all bets must be upheld. All bets will be upheld. Yep. <laughs> this starts to get freaky. Yeah, um, yeah. The rules of the universe bend the, bend themselves around the around the bets, uh, the pledges. Yep. So you can bet something that is you know conceptual, and it'll happen. I'm going step by step by step. There's a game later on where Shiro literally bets his own memories. Hmm. He bets his existence. Well, yeah, yeah. But memories are being part of that. Yes. Just to get someone to trust him. So, well, if you've got my memories, then uh, you'll you'll know what I'm then thinking. You know exactly and, uh, what my cunning plan is, because I remember yeah. my cunning plan. And you also know that I'm not actually working for someone else. But yeah, magic exists in the world. 
Um, and an important point is there, the being caught cheating during a game is grounds for instant loss. There's a very important word in there. Yep. Caught. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that everybody twigs to. Everybody. Um, if you're going to cheat, cheat well. Yeah. <laughs> And so they arrive in um, in, El- this, in the last country that, that humans, or known as humanity in Discord, uh, that they have rule in. Uh, it's the last human country. Apparently, way in the past, humanity actually was one of the biggest biggest players on the board before the you know. But they were actually the dominant species before the you well, know, yeah, because we outbreed everyone else. Uh, reforms. Yeah. Yep. yeah, because they outbreed everyone else and. Um, we're psychopaths. <laughs> yeah. Well, it turns well, out that n- that's one of the big mysteries: is how the fuck did humanity hang with everybody else during the big wars? Numbers. It was. It can't have just been that. <laughs> that would not have made up for the beastmen, Gav. Uh, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> um. So yeah, and part of it is honestly that you know, yeah, it, they don't they don't really explain that during the show for what we like to call obvious reasons. But that's not the focus of the show. Um, and this, so, you know, Sora and Shiro basically are pl- plummeting through the air and realize they're about to hit the ground as Ted's explaining things. He gets through Rule 9 before they hit. Um, they don't quite hit, exactly. There's a beautiful image as they're plummeting as about to, about to hit, where Sora just immediately, seeing the ground, grab the ground, grabs Shiro and puts himself between her and the ground, which I think is... Yeah, as he... Twigs, okay, Crazy Kid is not going to save us. Gotcha. <laughs> right. Uh, and also, it really does sort of point out exactly his view of their relative worth as people. Yeah. It's not just that he, he loves his sister, which he does. There, It comes across during the show that he really considers Shiro to be vastly more important than he is. And a better person than he is. Sora has a speech somewhere where um where he's like, humanity fucking sucks. They're terrible, petty, small-minded, mean-spirited little shits. But the potential of humanity, that's something else. Every once in a while, you get one that counts. And now, that's, and that's Shiro. <laughs> yeah, for, for the record, he includes himself in the dregs of humanity. Yes, yeah, because he is petty, small-minded, and mean-spirited a lot of the time. <laughs> he's he's better than he thinks he he's, is. He's much better than he thinks he is. He can be petty, and he likes to pretend he's mean-spirited. He, which he's not really. No. Um, um, he, another character we meet um, right around now in the where we're talking about is Steph. He clearly really likes and cares about Steph. Um... He also teases her relentlessly. <laughs> yes. But every now and then, he basically points out... That it's very clear, like, eventually you realize that of the, you know, the people who count, the people with re- who, are real, who have real potential to be much better than you know anything, Steph gets folded into that category. Yes. It's very clear that Shiro, uh, that Sora especially, Sora and Shiro... They both they both are very fond of Steph, and they both and Shiro and Sora basically yeah Steph's one of the real people the, the real ones the, the ones who well, really it's, matter. It's that thing. I mean, they tease her incessantly because she's hopeless at games. Yes, but they at the very least acknowledge that yeah okay in this world maybe but in most point you know games are not the be all and end all of a person and of their well, worth. There's also the fact they see a certain bit um, feel a certain kinship towards her. Because she's in the same situation they were in in their last world. Mm. Like, she'd do much better in their world than they than in Discord. Mm-hmm. She sucks at games, but we find out through just through, like, some a uh, couple of asides, she's an amazingly terrifying politician. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is a complete and utter sweetheart. <laughs> yes. Like she's she she's she's a legitimate she is as an aside she is of all the characters we are shown on, in the show, and we t- and that you see in, we uh, that are actually actually fully fledged characters she's the best person of anybody in the show. Yeah, I hate this term, but yeah, she's the most pure. <laughs> yeah, I. 
The term I pure is not the right term, word for it, but... But... I, she's just a better person than anybody else in the show. She's she, got the biggest heart. Yeah, absolutely. Like, everything she does is, is for the greater good, but not that creepy, pseudo, like, villainous way, but, like... Yeah, she she really is trying to make sure everyone gets what they need and what they want out of things. And not in a communist way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's, uh, not it's in a space the... fish kind of way. Yeah, she <laughs> she's got everyone's best uh, interests at heart, and she really is trying, but she's so far out of her depth. Oh, she's, she's she doesn't operate on the same rules as this world. She's not good at. She's not good at. I mean, she's too honest for starters. Yes. And she's she genuinely believes the best of the people. It's like the the best the best example of it is she's desperate to just be Shiro at uh, uh, Sora. Sorry, at something. Or either either of them. She is so like obsessed with just beating them at one game, anything like a coin toss. Um. The next person to walk around the corner, men, male or female. Um, and then she's going through all these and losing every time. They're explaining to her why there's no such thing as chance. You know, these things happen for a reason. If you, you have enough information, see you can follow it every time. What's going on. <laughs> yeah, like, this all starts off with a game of blackjack, which, you know... And... <laughs> Fine, one last time. Something that we can't just cannot influence whatsoever. And she sees a set of birds up on up on, on a church roof. And she goes, nearest to, how long do you think till those birds fly away? And so I was like, Steph, I've told you a million times, the games are always decided before they, they actually begin. Are you sure you want to do this? She goes, yes, I have to beat you at something. Fine, you go first. Yeah, thirty seconds. Like, uh, two hours. No, thirty seconds like, is what she says, but right, thirty seconds. He's like four, and then throws a rock at them. Are you ready? <laughs> Go. Picks up a rock and throws it at the birds. They fly away. <coughs> and she starts like, she said, "Did you set up the rules that I couldn't do that?" And she's like, "No." Then the rules. No. Oh. This is what I'm saying. They're trying to teach her this, and Unless... she... yeah. They're trying to teach her this, and it, it, it's, these things slowly start t- ticking in. The problem is that Steph, as, when she, she was brought up, she was brought up not to... Not in, her teaching was about actual politics and shit. Right, because she, she's actually the daughter of the, the former king of, of humanity. Yep. Um, was also really good at politics and sucked at games. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, and he's, everyone sort of thinks of him as a, as, as, you know, the most foolish king of all time. Like, you know, he's an idiot. And so instead of, like, just get, make, you know, handing the throne on to the, the next generation, he's set, set up a tournament to see who gets to become, you know, a gambling tournament to see who's the, the new king. Um, and Stephanie loses to someone named, to this girl named Kurami. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, Sora, basically Sora arrive, Sora and Shira arrive as the, as the two of them are playing poker for this. Uh, and, uh, Shiro catches, that, catches on that Kermie's cheating. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they don't get really involved because what does this have to do with them? Mm. Right. But, you know, Sora basically tells her she's cheating. Hoping that might be enough for this girl to figure out that, figure out what's going on. It's not enough for Seth to figure out what's going on. <laughs> well, the issue with it is, as well, they've been told that magic exists in the world, but the humans are kind of poor. Eh? They, don't, they don't know that yet. Oh, do they not? No, they find that out from Steph afterwards. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. She goes, I'm not sure how she's cheating, but she's clearly cheating. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, yeah. So they, they, they know she is, but they, even they can't figure out how. They're not well. Actually, they 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 their guess is it. It's almost certainly magic. Yeah. Um, and you know, eventually, so you know, 
after the, the after this all this, you know, Stephanie wearing <laughs> wearing a bedsheet wrapped around herself because yeah. <laughs> she's lost everything to to uh, to Kurumi, uh, comes up and says, "Why did you tell me they were cheating?" And you know, without telling me what was going on, Sora's like. Oh, I couldn't tell what was going on, but she was obviously cheating. <laughs> well, he doesn't, say, he doesn't even say that. He he basically says, "Oh, so you are you you're what you're saying is that if I told you how she was cheating, then you would have won because she'd have broken the rules." Well, yes, exactly. Okay, so <laughs> so it, it, it Shiro points out that yeah, she's just mad that she actually she she lost and is just taking out on us. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, she she let she let slip that you know, and Sora proceeds to berate her and her grandfather for you know, this for the stupid for being basically being idiots, and she gets very upset that he's insulting her grandfather. Uh, yeah, oh, say whatever you want about me, but don't fuck with my grandpa. My grandpa was a great man, and she, Sora's like, ah, sure. <laughs> and she challenges him to a game, which is what he's been trying to nudge her into doing. And he's like, okay, sure, let's play a game. Well, yeah, he basically says, okay, uh, and he they're going to play Rock, Paper, Scissors. And... And to Steph's credit, she... Ins- and Sora says, like, I can only choose these two things. So he's, he says slightly, I'm only going to play paper. If I play anything but paper, I can't win. So like if it's it, I, then I then I lose. So it's a situation that it's like okay if I play anything but paper and you play something that loses to what I play, then we both lose and it's a draw. Um, and he basically says you know you you if you win, you have complete control over us. You can do whatever you like. You know you can order me to die for insulting your grandfather if you like. Whatever. If we win, uh, you will. He basically asks for basically you'll do us some huge favor type thing. Right, and she's okay. And, what and about a she's draw? Like shield, and she's like, oh, they're they're just crashing in a hotel room. That, you know, that's not no, no. The bit is that she gets to the bit where it's like, okay, what about a draw? It's like, okay, well, if it's a if it's a draw, I get to ask you for for I get to ask you for a small favor, and I'll give you some. I'll give you a hint on how how Kurumi was how the, how your opponent was cheating. As thing back to you. Mm-hmm. And she he points out that you know they they only they only have so much money and they you know they don't have anything else. And she says, "Oh, so you're just looking for a place to stay and such." And he just sort of sticks his tongue out at her. And she accepts the game. Um, of course, th- there's a wonderful little bit of psychological analysis from Steph's point of view. Basically, okay, well, he can't do this. We're going through all the the permutations of what could possibly happen. Yeah, she, there's like the, she like throws up a whole like mental rubric about like the possible results of what will happen. <laughs> It's actually very. It's actually really interesting, and you can totally follow her chain of logic. And yep. if you ignore the very crucial piece of information she's ignoring, she makes largely the right choice. <clears throat> the problem is, she didn't actually ask Sh- Sora what the favor she was going to owe him would be. Right. She assumed she made it was an assumption, and he, he took his silence a- as. Uh, uh, as confirmation. Right. Yeah. Which it wasn't. <coughs> so, he points out that, yeah, basically, it does like, either way, like, since you didn't, it, since you were owing me a favor, my favor can be anything. When, me winning or drawing was the same thing. Except that, I have to give you a hint at how she win, she how she cheated. At which point, Shiro's like, aha, so my, my cunning plan is he orders her to fall in love with him. <laughs> which leads to some truly hilarious bits. Yeah, so some great physical comedy. <laughs> oh my god. Steph is amazing. Oh my god, she is fantastic. <laughs> She's such a Steph. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my favorite lines of the whole show. <laughs> <When> <laughs> When she gets frustrated, she can go through walls. Yeah. Yes. But she 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 knows that she's being forced to fall. She was for, being forced to view Sora in a light that she doesn't want to view him in. Although it becomes very clear, and it's pointed out by Jibril at one point that Jibril at one point is another character we'll talk about. That yeah, you're ordered to fall in love with him, not stay in love with him. 
Shut mm-hmm. up! <laughs> <laughs> just, just shut up, Jabril. As she proceeds to smash her face into a wall again. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, and this is the sort of thing that you, you see, it's an important point that comes up time and time again that Shiro points out to, to Shiro and Sora basically keep pointing out to Steph, who's the, Steph is basically the audience insert. I mean, yeah. Which is kind of kind of neat, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, it not being the two main protagonists, which I think is actually kind of cool. Uh, at any rate, um, I could identify with these two. That's the point. Yes. That's the issue. Yeah. Although again, <laughs> that's the point is they made they didn't they 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 weren't making the protagonists the audience inserts, which is yeah. what happens in ninety five percent of the Isekai series that you see. Yeah. Which is why the vast majority of protagonists in Isekai, ser- Isekai series are about as interesting as your average piece of Param cardboard. anime protagonist. Uh, so yes, that piece of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's unsupp- it's almost like a lot of Isekai series get meshed over get, get crossed over with harem series at the same time. I never would have thought that. Holy crap! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> almost as if. Um, so yeah, they, uh, they have, a, they, they go back to, you know, uh, Stephanie's place. They, you know, Stephanie bakes some cookies, which are quite good, apparently. Uh, and Stephanie explains the whole 16 races of Discord, uh, called the Exceed and how they're all ranked. And, you know, so Sora's like, okay, what's the deal with the ranking numbers thing? And she's like, oh, well, it sort of refers to how they're, how innately powerful their innate magic is. All right, so what about humanity? Yeah, we're 16, number 16 on the scale. We have no talent for magic whatsoever. Not only can we not use magic, we can't even tell when it's being used. Yeah. We're kind of the laughing, you know, laughing stock when it comes to magic. And Sora's like, oh, okay, so I can see why everyone seems to think they can't possibly win then. God, you people are underestimating humanity. <laughs> <laughs> And this is basically where Shiro Shiro and Sora basically say, yep, all right. We know what we have to do. First, we take over uh, the human kingdoms. Yep. First, become king of... of 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 Become king. And so, there's this wonderful scene where uh, they're about to crown Kurumi, uh, you know, the ruler, uh, and they open the door to the room. Uh, you hear the you, Sora shout, "Objection!" and you hear the Phoenix Wright music playing. The best part of it is he's playing, playing it on it. his cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> he's playing the recording from his cell phone. They, they, they. Some of their, some of their tech, has, their, their portable tech has fall, fallen through the, fallen through the Discord with them. So they've got a couple yeah. of cell phones, a couple of game, game things, a solar, a solar recharger for the internal batteries. Um. <laughs> I just love the fact that they actually actively played the music because th- they do a lot of, of references like oh that. absolutely there are references all over the place like they, they are clearly like giant freaking nerds oh yeah well obviously but like also the kind that like that kind of stuff yeah. <laughs> um, and they basically you know out Kurumi as being you know as having cheated and they say yeah she's being helped by the elves as they point to the the the, the 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 other person who was keeping sort of an eye on Kermie's game in the corner of the bar, this is how they knew that they that they were that Kermie was cheating. Not that they could detect the magic, but they watched. They saw this this woman in the back corner of the bar, you know, wearing a hood, keeping an eye on that game from a distance, with trying to make sure it wasn't obvious. They're like, okay, clearly th- she's this she's the person who's playing the game's partner. There's a cheat going on here. We don't know what it is though. And we now know there's magic invo- available, so almost certainly it's magic. And, okay, so that means that person's not human, and they unveil it to be an elf. Yep. Aha, we found an elf. You are an elven puppet. We challenge you for rulership of humanity. <laughs> and Kermie plays it pretty well, actually. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look, it's a random elf you planted in the, in the thing to frame me. And Sora's like, not bad. Not bad. You handled that pretty well. I... Kudos. 
I never said you were. I was listing that as a hypo hypothetical, as a hypothetical. Because I'm not stupid. I'm not directly accusing you of cheating. Because I have no actual proof. I'm just listing hypotheticals, and are trying to annoy you enough to agree accept my challenge. And so they they play a game of um. I forget what they call it. What type? What it is exact? It's a it's effectively chess, but not exactly. Uh, it looks like it's basically chess with the pieces. You basically you give the orders to pieces and they follow them as, but they have the pieces have their own will. So you can't like so they start off with with Shiro playing and. Actually, I don't want to go into too much detail about this now I'm thinking about it. The important bit is, unsurprisingly, they win. And the reason I'm, I don't want to go into the details is, here's the deal with the show. Sora and Shiro do not lose. Uh, can you guys hear me? I think Discord's being dumb. Let me check something here. Yeah, I think we're having a bit of a technical issue here, guys. Sorry about that. Um, oh, yeah. Discord is being... Discord is having issues. All right, give me a second here. I apologize to people watching us live and on the recording here. I got to do something quickly here. Okay, sorry about this. Little de little de little uh delay here. I just got to reboot Discord. Hopefully that'll fix things. Do, 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 do. Sorry, 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 folks. Alright, that is... Message them somewhere else here. Not just me, side scenes have issues all over, not surprised. Hello? 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 Hey, Eric. All right. Hello. I hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Uh, hang on. Need to get... Where's the Skype app? Can you hear me, Gav? All right. So uh, Peter and I are on a Skype call right now. But you're not with us in the Skype call. Well, it says All right, it, but, see, I see Gav there, but I can't hear him. Yeah, we can't hear you over there. I'm talking to him in, um, in Discord right now also. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Let me see if I can get Discord running again. <laughs> Well, that's because I just popped over into Discord because I saw you were over in Discord. <laughs> yeah, I can't connect to Discord. Okay, Peter can't connect to Discord, so come over here. I'm going to drop the Discord thing.
All right. So Gav is going to be in soonish. Okay. <laughs> Gav? Gav? Hello? Like, I can see Gav's image in the Skype call, but... Yeah. There we are. I think we can are you saying stuff now, Gav? There we go. All right, hey. there we go. It's been so long since I... And Gav just died again. Maybe I died. Hello? No, no. Uh, Gav cut out there partway through what he was saying. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, God. This is such a mess. Hello? Hello, Gab. Hello! Yay! Right, okay. No. Hang on a second. No. Okay, it keeps trying to put my microphone and my he and my headphones to the same thing, which is my yay. Aha. Uh -huh. so here we are. We're back on Skype like plebs. Yep, I, yeah, we, yeah, Discord is just down at the moment for us, so, for some of us, so. Well, you're a lab. I'm a goddamn barbarian. Screw you. Anyways, uh, what was the last time you last thing you guys heard from me? Uh fuck. I don't remember because I ended up carrying on a conversation by myself for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're we're in the middle of the the humanity and their use of magic. Oh wow. Okay. So yeah. Uh, hang on one second. Let me just do one quick thing here. You get an extra long episode today. Yeah, probably. <laughs> a little bit longer than normal. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's just turn. Am I being only reasonably loud? Uh, well, no. It's that I've, I've not fiddled with the volume levels for Skype ever on this computer. So mm, yeah. Uh, there we go. Now you guys are not blowing my eardrums out. Uh, Aw. <laughs> Boo. At any rate, so, yeah. Humanity, worse at magic, can't detect magic, all sucks. Yes. We got to, we got to the, all right, I, we did get to the bit, I don't know if Gav, was, Gav could hear us, but we got to the bit where they were, all right, so, Sora challenges, uh, Sora and, well, Blank as a team, challenge uh, Kurumi. Kurumi. To, to thing, after they reveal that she, after they don't quite reveal that she's uh, working with the elves. They reveal an elf in the room, yeah. uh, but they have no actual proof. But, you know. And they have a big match, which is based around chess. Now, we could go into... I was gonna, I was starting to go into details about the game of chess. It's bullshit chess! But more important... Then it hit me, and this is something I really should have said from the outset. I don't really want to talk about the actual mechanics and what happens during the games in general. Yeah, because... Cause honestly, watching how they, they manipulate the game and how the game changes... Uh, how the game isn't always what they think it is and how they adapt to that is half the fun of the show. It is. Mm. Also, going in, the thing you, you know is that Blank never loses. Right, and they're going to win. There's no question they're going to win. Right. We have a pair of invincible protagonists. Yeah. How do you make a show with invincible protagonists interesting? There are several ways. The main, one of the major ways to do it is to make the thing that's interesting is watching how they're going to win. So the method that they're going to win by has to be interesting. Or entertaining in some way. And I will say this flatly, No Game No Life does a fucking brilliant job of doing that. Yes. Every game that happens, we know that Sora and Shiro are going to win. But we're never sure how they're going to win. This is, like, you know, you know, like One Punch Man, you know Saitama can't lose. Mm. And in this case, it's not about how Saitama is going to win that matters. In, in One, in one Punch Man. It's everything else. It's yeah. everything else. And in No Game, No Life, it is how they're going to win and, you know, also what else is going on. 
And as we eventually reveal, the entire world is one big game. Um, so, yeah, they beat Kurumi in, this, in, the, in the chess game. Kurumi is still cheating, but she's not using an obvious cheat. And Sora and Shiro basically manipulate things so that they can win. Largely Sora in this case. Uh, Shiro's, you know, sort of tactical knowledge of chess is invaluable to keeping things, to basically bailing Sora out of a couple of mistakes he makes, because he does make mistakes, but he recovers from them. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they, so they win, and... They become king. Uh, yes. Like, like there, there's some argument over or not whether or not two people can, two people can be king, and they like Sora and Shiro like go over the 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 laws and the pledges. They're like, no, no, it doesn't say anything in here about their about it not being just like the two of us together. There, there's no rule saying it can't be a pair. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Tough. Not before <laughs> not before a truly hilarious bit though. Yes. Which I do want to go over. Because Sora's like, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, right, then I'll just be king in name I'll be king in name only, but effectively, we'll effectively work as a pair. That's not a problem. And Shiro's like, yeah, fuck that. If you're king, then you can have a harem, and that's totally uncool. And Sora's like, wait, what? So I will be king in name only, and... No, 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 no. I'm going to be king. All right, so now we have to play games to see who wins. <laughs> All right, we got so we'll, we'll three we'll days play. later. Three days later, as they agree to play, I think they're playing old maid. I think they're yes. <laughs> okay, whoever, yeah, yeah, whoever wins simple two, and whoever quick wins twice in a row. <laughs> <laughs> three days later, Sora's like, like, oh god, why did we agree to this? Sora's like, it's your fault for agreeing it. That they have to, we have to, the winner has to win by two. All right, best. 52 out of 101. <laughs> and then Shiro's like, are you sure the pledges say that this is like, let's take a look at them. Meanwhile, you see Steph on the side, like, going, hey! <laughs> she's clearly <laughs> like lost it because, you know, she's been awake for three days. <laughs> and they both realize, fuck, we weren't paying close enough attention. It could have been both of us. It can be both of us. And Steph passes out. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. So yeah, um, they win, they're king, and uh, over the night, Tet shows up to talk to them, and we have a wonderful little conversation with them on the roof. <laughs> uh, where they basically realize that, like, you know, the whole reason Tet's brought them here is because they beat Tet, Tet wants a rematch, by his, by, but by his, by, on his, on sort of his own turf. You're not allowed to quit while you're ahead. <laughs> and so Sora's like, so wait, we can challenge you to a game for the title of One True God. That's like, yep. Sora's like, oh, I am so in. Yeah, we're doing that. Hell yeah. <laughs> so Sora's like, so uh, Shiro, are you in? Shiro's like, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. And this is a wonderful bit where Steph's knows all this going on. Look at what it's like. And it's overheard. I was like, "What? That was Tet? Yep, Tet, the one true god. Yeah. What? What is Tet? Tet, Tet is like, <laughs> so I was like, never mind. Just get a ladder, and get us down from here, please." Yeah. <laughs> Steph's like, "Why are you talking with God? Why? Why wouldn't we be talking with God?" <laughs> Tet's a cool. Tet's a cool guy. He's fun. I. But I. What I did. Do you not talk with God? <laughs> this is after the, after Sora gives this huge grandiose speech after accepting the, 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 the after they accept the, the you know their sort of big announcement speech of you know the, where which is a great bit of double think honestly. Oh my God, is beautiful. It's this great thing about yeah yeah humanity's weak and that's what makes us strong. Strength is weakness. Weakness shall conquer the strong. <laughs> Because the strong always underestimate the weak. And that's when we can get them. Well, it's more a case of, the, you know, th those who have actual direct power never really have to learn to be clever. Mm -hmm. is, is, no, yes, yeah, it's, the, the, it's very much the, the 
Look at them over there. Their bulging muscles and their well-fed physiques and their like well educated and well educated and well equipped. They don't understand what it is to struggle and to rip and bite to get what you need. And that's why we'll win. Because <laughs> we're tenacious bastards. <laughs> well, he, but he also points out that in order to beat them, we humanity had to figure out figure out some way to hang with them. And logically, the only thing that we can do, we could have done, is by being, you know, trickier, cleverer, wiser than they are. Because that's we don't have magic, we don't have superpowers, we can't fly, we don't have super strength, we're not immortal. What the fuck do we have? We clearly hung with them. We had to be wiser and smarter than they were, and not in terms of like raw intelligence, but in terms of, you know. And so what? And he's, he basically points out what Ted did was he broke the fangs of the strong. You know the yeah they can't just murder us anymore. So they've had to figure out other things to do, and they've started aping what we do, what how we operate. We're still better at than they are. We just haven't actually... We were in the position of being strong, the, the strong, because the rules changed. What was the most important school skill was being good at this sort of shit. And everyone else is now... We were now the strong, and we fell. Well, fuck that noise. We can get back up there. And he makes that noise. Yeah, and we're t- we basically declaring war on everybody. Which freaks Steph the fuck out. <laughs> Steph's like, why are you declaring war on everybody? So I was like, oh my god, Steph, seriously. Okay, Kurmi was convinced we were spies for some other power, right? Because she was she she was working for the elves, right? Yeah. Everyone else is going to assume the same things. There's no way humans without like everyone else is assuming there's no way humans with no magic could have possibly beaten somebody being backed by the elves, right? Yeah. So the thing is, they don't know who's backing who they 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 have no clue who's backing us because no one's backing us. So, none of them are going to take a move until they can figure it out. It's just they're assuming that we're back. They can't figure it out because, nope, nobody's backing us. It's just like, I... So, by putting them on edge, they're all going to be looking for something that doesn't exist, which gives us time to actually, you know, get shit in order and actually come up with a plan. (laughs) (laughs) I absolutely love that. Yeah. Oh, man, that, that is one of the clever parts. They are literally double bluffing the entire world. Yes. Yes. And it's just like, you put that much thought into that, into, into that speech, and sort of like, I, yes. Steph is constantly thrown for a loop by how much thought and planning Sora and Shiro put into games. Which Now, I, I will say... Some of this, th- this is the thing. The show goes to its goes at length to make sure that these aren't assholes. They don't come out of nowhere. There, right. there is logical, deductive reasoning from there. But the fact that these two have thought of all of this every single time, this far into it, these two would be fucking terrifying in the real world. If they had any inclination to actually engage with it, they would be. Literally terrifying. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they weren't absolute social cripples. Yeah, that's the important thing. <laughs> they they operate on a level of intelligence and and cunning that is just beyond. So, so I, uh, Shiro is abjectly terrifying. Yeah, I. She, <sighs> God, when she actually gets to be an adult, and if she can develop any semblance of social graces at all and be able to interact with people, dear God, nothing is stopping this woman. No. <laughs> Which is Shiro's whole, which is Sora's whole plan, basically. That, this yeah. is what he wants. Because he's convinced he's not going to go much of anywhere, but Shiro. Yeah. Shiro's another matter entirely. Right. He is utterly convinced that she she's. She's already her. smarter than me by an order of magnitude. Imagine what happens when she gets older. <laughs> right. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, we get to the bit where uh, it looks like they're doing nothing, just playing games and reading books, and Steph is getting increasingly annoyed with them. And this is where she starts challenging the game, trying to get them to do something. Yeah. And Sora's like, and eventually it comes out that what they've been doing is like, we don't, the, the whole thing about the information is Sora's like, 
we don't have the information to challenge anybody. We don't know enough. Like, we want to go after the the uh, the Eastern Alliance, the the Beastmen. That's the next target we want to go after. We don't we don't know an, anywhere near enough about them to even remotely challenge them. Because the the rumor info we have it makes it seem like we have no hope. I don't believe we have no hope, but without information, we don't. Yeah, according to all this, there is no chance that they 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 have a sixth sense that acts like telepathy. They can do all these other things, like. No one knows what game there is because every time they challenge, they have their memories wiped about the game. Without any information, we have no hope. And due to the due to this rumor mill and how things work, now yes. obviously these rumors are fostered by them to give that impression, but that still leaves us in the dark. Right. Yeah, Steph, you know they're, they're literally like saying, you know, this is you know Steph realizes they've literally gone through the entirety of, of like every book in the castle. Um, yeah. along, along, along the way, uh, you know, she, uh, well, I say along the way, she mastered it in like 10 minutes. The, the, the language of Imanitor is actually written differently than, it, it's, it's one of those comedy things where it's, everything is said and pronounced the same way, but to write it down, it's completely different. And right, Shiro's then, like, oh, yeah, uh, okay, um, <laughs> yep, got it. <laughs> what? What? Yeah, it's fine. It's all it's all said the same way, so it's fairly easy to work out once you know that. And you're, she's not wrong. If you ha take a language that is spoken exactly the same way, it's just the the script is the way the the letters are different. That's a that's a cryptographic puzzle that is solvable. Yeah, not as fast she as she, in, she, does, she does, it. does it in five minutes. Well, we yeah. don't know exactly how long it is, but <laughs> she does it fast enough that even so even Sora's impressed. Yeah. And then they spend the rest of the time reading every book they can find. Yeah. And Sora basically comments, you know, mentions one of the other races, the Flugel, who are immortal and after the, the after Tet changed everything, now value knowledge above everything. Mm -hmm. like, if we get in contact with, if we get the Flugel on our side, that'd be amazing. I just have no idea where to find a Flugel. And Seth's like, oh, I know where a Flugel is. What, really? Yeah, there's one in town in the, what used to be our, the, our library. What do you mean used to be our library? Well, well, we kind of lost it. My grandpa kind of lost the library to her, so, you know, she kind of has it now. <laughs> so I was like, you lost the fucking library. God damn it, we needed that information. Fine, fine, we'll go there. We'll, take, we'll, we'll win the library back from, from her, from the flugel. Flugel are, for all intents and purposes, angels, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, they refer to them as demons because they've got ass wings. <laughs> it's that Japanese yes, style. Their wings are attached to the tops of their hips as opposed to their backs. Yeah. But <laughs> it's that Japanese style. Where, you know, the, it's literally changed them to bat wings, and it's a demon. Yeah. I mean, the, the Flugel are... They're killing machines, uh, is yes. legitimately what they are. They were, they, they were created by their deity to kill gods. Their original purpose was to just murder shit. They're also, you know, hot chicks, but you know, whatever. Nah. Just like, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, then we we are introduced to one of the other major characters of the show, Jabril. Uh, they arrive in the library. You know, they're like, okay, and then Jabril comes rising up out out from behind, comes floating down in a column of light. And Shiro and Sora are like, oh fuck. We heard them just That's he's like, super oh, cool. Well, there's there's all this description of like they're looking vaguely angelic and all stuff, and they're like, yeah, angelic, like the angel of fucking death. <laughs> 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 oh Jesus! And then she proceeds to talk like an airhead TV celebrity. Yeah. And they're like, I eh, oh, just ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> So they're talking, she's talking about all the stories, like, okay, look, that can't be your normal speech pattern. Could you stop that? You're, you're freaking us out. You sound like someone we know, we remember from our world. And she's like, Jiro's like, well, I didn't come up with this first? Damn it. I thought it was unique. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jiro doesn't believe them at first that they're from another world, because that's just, I mean, Texas is ridiculous. Possible. Come on. It's technically possible, but the amount of magic that would you know would that be required to keep you here, spirit energy required to keep you here, would be astronomical. 
And she's like, okay, look, let, let me, can, if I can examine your bodies, I can confirm this. And Sora's like, fine, what do you need to examine? Oh, just your erogenous zones. And Sora's like, I'm in! <laughs> hey, but, uh, but I want to examine yours. She's like, yeah, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> she's actually, Turns out their not, wings are their like, erogenous zones. It's not, it's not even, <laughs> like, that's not even her reaction. She's enthusiastic about it. Yeah. And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Because Sora makes the request that he's like, Seth's like, yeah, that's never going to happen. Oh, sure, totally. Seth's like, what? <laughs> what? Um, yeah, it turns out they're her Roger's zone or her wings. Um, and, of course, it's pointed out that it's, it, since this is show is not 18 and over, it, Sora has to keep his pants on. <laughs> um, but she confirms that, yeah, they don't have any... They don't have any spirits in them, so they can't be from this world. She's like, I'm not even sure what you are, but you're clearly not from, from this board. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, fine. I, I can accept that. And Sora's like, yeah, I'm totally challenging you to, like, he's like, so, she's like, you know, I want your, he's like, I want the library. And she's like, well, that's, this library's basically my life. <laughs> you have to offer me something pretty good. How about this, how about this iPad with 40,000 books from our world on it? She's like, I, the Done. Done. <laughs> what, what, a thousand? Uh, yes. This is, but how can I? How can I? How can I prove that they're from a? You know, from another world. They could just be like anything scribbled down. Uh, and she's and he's like, well, um, try reading it. She's like, she's like nothing. I know every. Let me try. I can, I can speak every language. In, you know, in this world, looks at it. Oh my god, I don't know this language. What the fuck? And she all is, this one, all this one, all this one. <laughs> she's That's literally drooling on the iPad. <laughs> she is that excited. Like forty thousand books, and I have to learn the languages first. This is great. <laughs> As an aside, I adore Jabril. <laughs> Jabril's awesome. Yes. <laughs> so she wipes her mouth off. Is like, okay, you know, we only play we we Flugel only play one game, and he's like, yep. Uh, I forget the name of it. It's like Shiburatori or something like that, which is it was yeah. a word game. Uh, Shiratori, that's what it is. Shiratori. Shiratori, which is basically you, 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 the first person goes and says a word. The, other person, the next person has 30 seconds to come up with another word that starts with the last letter of the previous word. Now, they're not just playing Shiratori. They're playing Materialization Shiratori, which means whatever word you say, if it's present, it goes away. If it's not present, it appears. And thus begins a battle of wits between Sora and... S Sora, Shiro, and Jabril. Yeah. <laughs> With Sora's first choice being hydrogen bomb. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> so, which is basically Sora testing, okay, can I use something that exists in my world but not in this one? Yes. Can he I use things she has? Know what they are? No idea what they are. Yes. <laughs> and he's checking to see, you know, and the other important rule is you cannot directly kill your, you cannot directly try to directly kill your opponent. Mm. You can't say, you know, something that would be that is directly them dead. And you can't make anything up or use fictional terms. Right. It can't be something fictional. It has to exist somewhere, and it has to be in an actual language that someone knows. Even if it's not a language that your opponent knows. Um, so they go back and forth, and it's hilarious. Yes. And Shiro's co Sora's constantly coming up with like very silly stuff to do, and, and Jabril's coming back with equally silly stuff because she's having fun. The other important bit is that she mentions that she's she finds the two, she's curious about two of them, but is not even remotely wary of them because they're just even if they are you know not from this world they're just humans whatever. They're like mm -hmm. ants. I don't have to. I might be curious about ants, but I'm not. I don't find them intimidating or anything like that. And Sora basically makes the point that yeah, um, you're not afraid of the unknown. That's actually not the wisest of things. You're just an empty-headed <laughs> academic. And he proceeds to write it down in Japanese on a, on a napkin and show it to her. And she's like, I know what you mean by that. But why do you say that? He proceeds to point out, yeah, you're not afraid of the unknown. You have no caution when it comes to trying to learn these things. Which is what he does, of course, over the course of the game, because he keeps coming, mentioning things that are not from her, that is things that are outside her knowledge that she's not worried by. 
For instance, towards the end of the game, he proceeds to name Mantle. Then, Crust. Specifically referring to the terms referred to, you know, layers of the earth. And then let's not, let's not go too deep into this because it's a lot of fun to learn this. Yes, shit. but yeah, he basically yeah. he. I don't want to go th the full thing, but he as I'm saying, he's naming things in scientific terms that Jabril doesn't know what they are or how they work because she's not from a world that has that advanced in terms of in that time type of advanced science, and this is what causes her to lose in the end, and it's fucking amazing. It's not just funny. Yes. This is, by, by the way, in my opinion, the best game in the show. Mm. I, I, I agree with that scenario. Yes. Because it is the most clearly logically laid out game. Like, you actually literally, like, it is, like, you literally, if you pay attention, you see every move Shiro makes. And it's all set up from his first move. Yes, and it's also uh, um, it's also like one of the most psychological too. Yes, and I don't mean like um, some some of the other bullshit they pull, but like he's very much playing her and feeling her out at the same time. Yep, it's brilliant. It's an amazing game, and I don't want to spoil any more than I have. Mm -hmm. It's phenomenal, uh, and they win. And Jabril, and they basically like. She's like she mentioned after you guys are insane. He's like, yeah, I guess we kind of have to be insane if we were going to challenge God. And Jabril's like, wait, what? You're going to ch you're challenging Tet? Yep. Oh my God, I have finally found the thing the Flugel have been fucking looking for since Tet changed the rules. We found someone to follow since we couldn't follow our previous God anymore because he. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, not merely do you get the library, you get me. Like I, I'm swearing myself to you. I'm one. I used to be a member of the Flugel main council. I've and I still a lot of sway. I am yours, body and soul, Shira, Sora. <laughs> Sora Shira, because whew, you guys rock. <laughs> and for, for awesome. Uh, for his for his part, uh, you know, uh, Sora's like, okay, that's cool. Um, by the way, here's the iPad. He says, I was gonna let you look at it anyway. Yeah, I, I just wanted the book, so you can have this anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's like. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, I am a generous god. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, honestly, Jabril, like, legitimately, like, it, it, this is not, like, you know, any hyperbole from her. She's ecstatic about this. Yeah. yeah. And, like, and, and, like I said, you got to respect anyone whose goal is to kill God. Now, they're not going to kill Tet, but they're going to kill Tet. <laughs> they want to beat Tet, not kill him. There's a difference. That's the same thing as far as Tet is concerned. Well, no, they can, Tet can have a rematch afterwards. Well, yeah, he's immortal. <laughs> <laughs> so? Again, how does that killing God then, Eric? He's going to kill... They're killing God. That's just how it is at the end. <laughs> at any rate, so... At this point, he's like, okay, so... Jabril, what do you know about the Beastmen? Not as much as I'd like since I challenged them in the game and had my memory wiped of the game. And they're like, I... God damn God it! God damn it! <laughs> And she's like, well, here's things I know, you know, basically, you know, you know, the elves challenged them four times and lost every time and then just stopped. And nobody's challenged them for, at all for quite some time. Actually, Steph's telling me that. And Jabril's like, yeah, nobody except one other race who challenged them eight times in a row and lost. I wonder who that could have been. Steph's slowly heading for the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jabril initially is not that, Im not that fond of Steph. Again, she respects and is she actually genuinely respects and likes Shiro and Sora, but the rest of humanity, humanity is like she's like yeah whatever they're ants, mm. and not yeah, they're worth my notice. notice. It also doesn't help that at the time when they met, um, Steph was currently under a, uh, a a punishment for losing a game where she had to act like a dog. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Which didn't help situation. No. <laughs> Whenever she got a bit uppity, uh, <laughs> Shiro was like Steph sit. And she did. <laughs> Completely voluntarily, but it didn't exactly give the best impression. <coughs> no. And again, like, from someone who's as, who's as cynical and arrogant as Jabril, Steph's actual strengths are not obvious. No. Mm. And it's not till Sora has his big, like, 
basically, you know, Steph basically they uncover everything that you know her her uncle that her grandfather did, and Sora is like despairing at this point, and Sora not being good at like holding this sort of shit in, basically he's like, oh God, he must have been an idiot, and Steph's like, you know, and she's like, I, he wasn't an idiot, he wasn't insane. He's like, Sora's like, I can't, like I, like I. I can't defend these actions. How can you keep betting and losing territory like this? And Steph runs out of the room in tears. And Sora's like, damn it. I didn't, that, that's not what I, that's not what I wanted. I'm just, uh. I'm a bad person. I gotta go talk to Steph now. But I don't know how, because I'm a bad person. <laughs> so, basically, you know, a bit later, Steph's remembering that her grandfather gave her this key. Which is supposed to be given to the next ki- the, to the, to if Steph ever meets somebody who legitimately can possibly say to, to bring humanity back from the brink, give her give them the key. It's a special key. Uh, and Steph's like, "There's no way I'm giving it to Shiro. He's awful. So sorry, he's awful." And Jabril pokes her head through the wall because she can do that. Uh, <laughs> tell her to go back to the library. She something she might want to see. And. So she eventually does, and she overhears the co- Shiro and Sora and uh, Jabril's conversation about humanity. And he's basically going through all the stuff, and he's like, all the notes on the, the, the previous eight games between the humanity and the Beastmen. And he's, she's like, Jabril's like, why, are you, why do you keep looking at this? Are you looking for Stephanie? He's like, not entirely. I mean, yes, but... I mean, it's... He can't it boils, be that insane. Yeah, it boils down to saying he can't have been that dumb. And he starts looking at the the different territories and he's well, there's nothing there. So that's a fair loss. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's some nothing valuable there. mines, there, but there's a mine there, but humanity use them. Yeah, humanity doesn't have the technology to mine that, so it would have had value for the beastmen, but not for us, so fair. I mean, it's it's almost like he's losing deliberately at this point. Wait. The, 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 this is where he has his big speech about humanity and the humanity's potential, mm. and he's talking about how, like, you know, and he and he, and it, it's this great speech, and you know, because he's like talking about how much he is, is human, about humanity's worthless, and sure, uh, Chip, Steph's like, I knew it, I couldn't, and he's like, but I believe in humanity's potential. Steph's like, what? <laughs> and he's talking about like, you know, the truly special ones are often misunderstood by people. By, by everyone else, and it's the duty of people like me to make sure, to, to support them and make sure that they, that eventually people figure them out. And he's referring primarily to, to, to Shiro at this point, but it's very right. clear, it's like, he wants to believe that the previous king was one of those people. And eventually, you know, Steph comes in with the key and basically gives it to him, and they find the thing, and it's his notes about all the matches with the Beastmen. Because the Beastmen, realizing that he had no magic, that humanity has no magic, they wanted them to keep challenging. Sora's big point is, like, if they can erase the memories of everybody, if they keep doing what they're doing, people would stop challenging them. They, it'd be better for them to lose occasionally. So people think they have a chance. Why are they, why are they operating this way? There's a reason for it. And then why did this guy keep challenging eight times? Because he wasn't there. He wasn't having the memory that you lost comes up. And it turns out that what it was is that the beastmen weren't erasing the king's memory. They just made him promise not to tell anyone as long as he lived. Because the, the that arrogance again, but, you know, right. in the the worthless. Like, well, let's keep farming this guy. Let's not erase his memory. Just don't let him tell anyone. So he keeps coming back. And we'll just him keep... almost win. Yeah, <laughs> we just they, they literally said, you know, we'll just keep farming the dude. And he recorded it all, so that the person after him, after he dies, because the pledge only covered him as long as he lived. Mm-hmm. And Sora's like, oh my god. Oh my god. That's dash clever. Okay. And I, I love his line. He basically hands the book to Steph, and he's like, this book... Your grandfather... No, no. The previous king really was your grandfather. <laughs> because he'd earlier used that sort of similar line that you, know, you really are the, grand, the previous king's granddaughter as a sort of diss on her in terms of the, you know, foolishness and such. He, this is him turning that previous principle back around to be a 
the mo quite possibly the most profound compliment he can come up with. Mm. Because he's just like, oh my god, I... This took serious, just serious courage and willingness to accept the fact that, you know, he was willing to sacrifice his reputation in history forever. And all this, just to get, for a chance to save save everything. Mm-hmm. Now, like I say, this is at this point. There's been a few little jokes, and and but that level of respect for Steph has been rising. I mean, it does get to a point where we, we had that conversation earlier, where her name becomes a derogatory term. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like, like you're Steph. You're such a Steph. Steph, and she's like, what? yeah. Are you using my name as a pejorative? That is the most unbelievably unfair insult I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, Steph, you're such a Steph. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but there's there's like conversations that Sora, Shiro, Sora, and Jabril are having, and and um, you know Steph will pipe in saying, "Oh, so you mean like this, this, and this?" Or you know, oh, God, it'd be really handy if we could. I mean, that plan's cool, but we'll need to get all the nobles on board. It's like, well, I've been doing that for years. Yeah, the nobles are in my back pocket. I've been playing them off against each other for years. But yeah, like, yeah, because he um, one of the first things uh, Sora and, and and Shiro do is institute a bunch of reforms. And, like, a handful of nobles, like, get uppity about it and, and get taken out by via games. So he was like, I was expecting to be a lot more resistance about that. And Steph is like, oh, oh yeah, that, none of them are in any position to, to challenge us right now. What? Why? Oh, I've, I've been handling them for years. It's not a big deal. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, wait, you followed that? <laughs> you know what's going on, Steph? He's like, yeah. <laughs> She's an idiot at games. She's a fierce politician. Yes. <laughs> Playing off of one another for years. Don't ever in any position to challenge me. <laughs> Actually, if she did just the real implication I got from that was it wasn't that she's been doing it for years. It's literally after they instituted the, instituted the reforms, she then proceeded to immediately start breaking their, the nobles' power bases against each other and playing them off each yeah. other. This has been if, happening over like the past few weeks. If the kingdom had been just handed over to her. No problem. She'd have just dominated. <laughs> well, no, again, she, she wouldn't have changed the status quo. And, you know, everything would have just carried on as it was. But she'd have had no problem ruling. Well, the real problem... Well, she would have no problem ruling over Imanity. Mm. The problem is that Imanity would be slowly be strangled and crushed by, the, by everybody else. Because yes. mm. you need people who are, capable at, who are capable of playing the games. Which is exactly why the, the king... Right did the whole thing about making the... You know, they, they realized that's exactly why he put the kingdom based on a a random, like, tournament for gamblers. Yep. Yeah, it's he, specifically he, gamblers. The yeah. people that are willing to take risks and can read their opponents. Yep. And so, Sora, this where we start ramping towards, you know, the confrontation with the Beastmen. And Sora, you know, looks out at the, the... He basically makes an appointment... Long distance appointment with the with the with the beastmen because he's looking at them through the camera on his phone and sees that the guy that one of the beastmen notices him on the phone and he basically gestures them to let that he's coming over and the the beastman nods not knowing that he's given Sora information because you know <laughs> of course he did uh, <laughs> and they go over uh, there's. You know, they enter the lobby and Jabril's going, "Oh my God, what is all this technology stuff? This is so cool." Sora falls. Sora, Sora and Shira file this away in their in the check mark for. Jabril yeah. doesn't recognize his tech, and she actually had a match with them. This tech must be involved in the game. <laughs> Clearly. Well, no. As they walk in, as Sora's like, "Huh, Jabril, do you know what that is?" No, um, but it's super cool. Yeah, it's some sort of imaging thing, I guess. Huh. Okay. File that away. <laughs> <laughs> the uh god the the ambassador's aide who they're talking to the old dude whose name escapes me at the moment uh i i, I he's great uh yes uh, shaggy eyebrow guy yeah yeah uh, zoom is the ambassador and her grandfather, Hatu, uh, Ino Hatuse, there he is. There it is. Yeah, Hatuse, yes. her grandfather, is her. Uh... 
<laughs> uh, he's he's great. They, I mean, both he and Azuna are great. I, again, well, yeah. Anyway, so the, the scene in the elevator, because there's an elevator, of course there is. The Morbies have a lot of tech, it turns out. Uh, they don't have a lot of magic, but they have technology. Um, the elevator starts sort of going up, and, you know, there's this bit where you see Jabril sort of hanging from the ceiling, and she and uh, and Hatuse basically start sniping each other very politely on the surface, but it's very clear they loathe each other. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, considering uh, Jabril starts referring to them as mongrels all the time, and how she, you know, just used to fly over and nuke them from time to time. Yeah. Back in the back in the war because but back in the good old days, and I got to murder days. people. <laughs> yeah, you get the impression Jabril kind of misses the whole chaos and bloodshed of the wars, as you do, <laughs> because she's you know at heart you know. Again, the Flugel were designed to murder and destroy everything. She's a living weapon. Yes, and she can't do that anymore. The world no longer works in a way that she is capable of being a living weapon. Yeah. So instead, she's an academic. <laughs> <laughs> because everyone needs a hobby. Yes. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the Flugel used to take heads as trophies. Now they take information. Not as much fun, but still pretty good. <laughs> also, with, their, with the materialization territory game they play, they can actually murder people and not have it stick. Yeah, they can get a little bit of a fix for it. Yeah. <coughs> Which I think is part of the reason I think she actually kind of likes Sora and Shiro. Yes. Yeah. Sora tried to blow her up with a bomb to start run things off with. It's like, <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, I can respect these guys. <laughs> First move, trying to blow everything up. Well, all right then. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, Sora and Shiro proceed to... There's this wonderful scene where they basically... Sora reveals their... their you know, the, he basically reveals that he's basically figured out the Beastman's game. That, A, no, the Beastmen don't have a sixth sense. If they did, they, w <laughs> they would have accepted our initial offer for the game. But they know better than that. <laughs> yeah, they make, a, they make a bullshit offer of just, like, we want, you know... We're, we're going to trade everything we've got for your nothing. <laughs> and if you know, and if no, you know, he, trusted... his initial bet is literally just a game of for uh, Izuna's panties versus Steph's panties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like saying, yeah, because if you'd have if you'd have um, accepted that straight, oh, you know, if you you know, if you were six cent, you'd have known what we was really saying, and you would have taken that bet. <laughs> but you didn't. No, no, no. I know what you're doing. You're cold reading us, and you've got very good senses. So you can detect, you can sort of read our heartbeats and shit. See, I'm good at cold reading too, and I just read your reactions. <laughs> and, then, and then the basement dude's just like, oh, fuck. I see. Okay, then. He does that whole thing. It's, it's knock if you can't go. He, he wants to say something, but he knows he's absolutely being schooled in that moment in time. Yeah. Yep. He's like, oh, we are so fucked. All right, right, time to run away. Oh, no, no I'm not going to let you run away now. No, no, no. I'm going to make a, make, a, make a challenge offer that is so good that you, if you refused it, it means that we are very definitively correct about you guys not having a sixth sense and be able to read minds. Yeah. Because you would run he, away from it if you could. And he's like, and he oh, no. Oh, no. He traps them in as well. He gives them literally an offer they can't refuse. It's like, here's a massive prize. You cannot resist this. But if you do, and we don't play this game, we've got the information of how your shit works. And I'm sure the elves would love that information. But Sora's figured out that what it is is a video game. Right. Or just because there's this big video screen, and... Jabril has no idea what that is, because it was something that related to the video game. Yep. And because of video games, we, we, we know exactly how you can cheat in a video game, and no one else would figure it out because there's no magic involved. And they don't know what computers, how computers work. We do. And we'll tell the elves. And he's like, 
Oh. Oh. Okay. So I'm not saying anything right now. But what are you betting? <laughs> yeah. He's like, okay, and to make it things better, he's he's like, okay, you know, we'll up the stakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we're betting, you know, we want all of the, the, the all of the beastman's territories on the continent. In exchange, it, you, what we're putting up in exchange, humanity's race piece. The representation of humanity as a sentient race. It's literally the token that gives humanity rights to exist, by all accounts. Yeah. If you have be treated this, you a, whatever, as people. You could do whatever the fuck you want with humanity. And he's like, oh, hell. He's right, we can't refuse this. I have to go through proper channels, but he's backed us into a corner. All right, we just have to win. There's no way these hairless, these hairless monkeys can beat us in our, in our game, though. They may claim they know what's going on, but whatever. I have to win. I don't. It's less about like Sora Poise points out. Like, yeah, technically speaking, we could keep our. You would have to accept even if we didn't up the stakes, because you have to beat us to erase our memories of the game. That is what you want. But we're making it even bigger just to make sure that everybody knows you're not that you. We bat you into a corner. Also, he's doing it to actually piss off. Kurumi to get her to challenge him again. Yeah. <laughs> because Kur because Kur he needs Kurumi and her friend, her elf friend, uh, Phil, to uh, to for, for his plans. Uh, this leads to the game, oh my god, this game. So, Kurumi shows up to challenge him, and holy shit. <laughs> they, they play Go. Uh, it's, it's Othello, actually. Is it, oh, it's Othello. oh, it's, you're right. It is Othello. Um, but before that, like he, ch she challenged the game. She challenged them to the game. He basically sits Shiro down on the, on the, the the throne where they've been sitting, and he basically says, "You know, I, you know, do you believe me? I believe. Remember, Shiro, I believe in you. We are not the heroes of some of a shonen manga. We always win before the game starts. Remember this." Turns, o turns, turns to, go to go to the game, and things start glitching out. And it comes up with Shiro waking up in bed alone. And Steph doesn't know who Shiro is, Sora is. Shiro is the only one who came to this board. And the end credits are the normal end song credits, but glitching out and... Every evidence of Sora in there, he's just gone. It's just Shiro. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it is staggeringly, just brilliantly done. It, it, it is particularly well done. It, it does a good job of driving home the wrongness of what just happened. Yep. Yeah. And Not like on a, on a cosmic horror kind of way, but in a, in a oh kind of way. <laughs> yeah. And the next episode is all about Shiro trying to figure out what the fuck just happened. And it turns out that this is the game we're going to talk about where the whole point of the game was entirely to for Sora to win to, but make sure that Kurumi got his memory so that she could trust him. To prove to her that he's not working with one of the other races. Yeah, the, the whole part of it was that basically as they progressed through the game it was a, it was a two-player game one of the things they, they definitely say is, A, it's him versus Kurami, but their partners, i.e. Phil and, and uh, Shiro, can still play on their behalf if they become incapacitated. And every single piece of the board represents a part of them, whether it's a part of their psyche, their existence, their memories. And one of the first pieces that he gives, basically gives up is his memories, and Kurami gets them. And the only rules that he sets is that when the game is done, regardless of who wins, the winner gets two wishes. Yeah, you can make two demands of the opposing team. Yeah, it can be anything. You can make the you can make it permanent. You can bring it bring it everything back. You can do whatever you want. Two just two demands. And the whole I mean, I'll I'll let you continue, but 
the whole point of it is, like I say, it's just to get that that bond between them, essentially. Yeah. Literally, what he wants is for her to have his memories, which he makes permanent. He's like, yeah, the memory swap for both of us is permanent. That's his first demand. His second demand is he wants the rights to to adjust, to modify Phil's memories. Just that's once. part of his scheme. Just the once. Just the once. And because it's part of the plan. It's part of the plan. And Kurumi now knows that and knows what it is that she's okay with it. Because we find out that, you know, Kurumi's technically Phil's slave. And Phil kind of hates the whole situation about how Elven Guard, the Elven Nations, work. work. She's like, yeah, I'd tear the whole fucking thing down given half an opportunity. I'm not going to get that opportunity. <laughs> yeah, you know, she, she and Kurumi are basically as close as Shiro, or, or, are as close as Shiro and, and Sora. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's pretty clear they love each other. I mean... <laughs> yeah. They're, they're the bestest of droogs. And maybe more, they're not that's quite like, as cracked and broken as Shiro and Sora, but they not. are the bestest of droogs. They're, they're, well, yeah. Kurumi's not, not as broken, not, nowhere, nowhere near as broken as Shiro and, and, and Sora. Yeah. She's actually relatively sane. There's She's a, a relatively well-adjusted uh, human being for being a slave. Yeah, well, that's because Phil doesn't treat her like one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As far as Phil's concerned, she's her friend. You know, her her closest friend. The person she cares most about in the world. Her family sucks as far as she's concerned. They're slave-holding assholes. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> But yeah, she doesn't. She, as far as she's concerned, Elvengard as a nation, it can go. It can go rot. It's it's crap. <laughs> Which, and so yeah, it, we find out all this stuff, and eventually, so this all leads up to their big challenge uh, of the beast to, against the beastmen. And so they they get it. They enter, enter the the big arena. and They're putting these VR pods to play the game. Um, as it's starting. Uh, What's his name? I forgot his name all of a sudden. Damn it. Uh, da, 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 da. Shaggy Abro, say, man. Yeah. Hot to say notices Kurumi standing there watching. And he's like, oh. Oh, that clever bastard. It's like, yes, I can erase the, I can erase the memory of all, of all of humanity and everyone that are here watching. Yeah. One of the, one of the stipulations that they make is that all, because all humanity is at risk, all humanity gets to come and watch. And as he's making the rules, he's like saying, you know, should, should humanity lose... They forfeit the rights to keep, you know, the, the 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 memories of what transpires here, both the players and every, you know, every person in the arena. Right, fair enough. And then he notices the elf after he's made the pledge, and it's like, fuck. <laughs> well, he notices Kurame, and his intelligence is good enough to go, oh right, she's the elfin puppet. God damn it, they're scrying through her eyes. Fuck. <laughs> now. The main reason is to to keep, to keep it like it's the okay. First off, well, we can't. Inter- it's like looking to see if they can interfere with the game. No shit. Okay, we'll keep an eye out for any obvious cheats. We're gonna watch as much as we can, and I can detect magic. <laughs> well, it's also the fact that the they they do the whole they they do the double bluff. So they say if we have her there, they're gonna think that we're cheating. So they're gonna spend so much effort. Trying to find out how we're cheating, they're going to forget to cheat themselves. Somewhat, yeah. <laughs> it, layers upon layers. Yeah. Uh, and they get forward into the virtual world, which is Tokyo. Yeah. <laughs> Leading to a complete freak up by Shiro and Sora. They both mentally just shut down. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and eventually it's real that no, this is not acceptable. Is- <laughs> this is not actually Tokyo. This is something we've made up. It looks like something you guys know. So this is just a fictional creation you made up. You've never heard of Tokyo. No. Oh, thank God. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she, so I was like, huh, that explains why I can stand outside in the daylight. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. And he explains it's basically a first-person shooter. There are a bunch of NPCs wandering around, and the basic premise is really, really, really silly. Um, <laughs> so there are a bunch of, of, of animal girls, you know, beast girls, wandering around, 
all of whom, you know, are trying to, they all are in love with the player, the players, both sides. But the actual goal of the game is to shoot the opposing player to make them perm- them fall in love with you. So, Izuna versus the uh, Shiro, Sora, and Steph, and Jabril. Because it's four on one. And the Beastmen are totally okay with this. They're like, yeah, pff, whatever. Well, they set it. They're rules. Yep. But no, Shor- S- Sora asked if they could be all four of them, and he- the Beastmen's like, yeah, totally fine. So, Five against yeah. one is fine by us. Yep. So the NPC. So the M- so the NPCs, if they touch you, they drain your quote love power. If you shoot them, they disappear. They they fall in love with you. They disappear, and you get their love power to replenish your love power. And every shot you use from your gun, choose a plummet your love power. And if one of your teammates reduces your love power or has been hit by uh, the opposing team, you can shoot them to get them back on your side and restore the love power. Although for a short period of time, they are in love with they are dramatically in love with you and can't do anything. Which leads to all sorts of really comedic moments. Yes. Mostly involving Steph. <laughs> Not entirely. Because when that's explained, the first thing that happens is Shiro shoots Sora. Yeah. <laughs> Like, not even when the first thing he's explained, like, the, the syllable has barely finished out of his lips. Bang! Yep. <laughs> and then Jabril shoots Shiro. <laughs> Fun times had by all. Yeah. <laughs> this point where they get they try and get her back on side and get everything sorted out, they make Steph shoot herself, and she starts trying to make out with her own reflection. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so they split up and start doing stuff and the first person Azuna runs first person of their team that Azuna runs into is Shiro in this office building and I never ever want to play FPS against Shiro no no so we have this narration from Shiro from Sora going yeah you're probably you know, oh you're up, you're probably thinking this isn't that big a deal Here's the interesting thing is, in our world, you know, we've got these games, these first-person shooter things, and you'd think that I'd be the one that holds all the records. It's not. It's Shiro. <laughs> Shiro's the one who's really good at these games. I'm only good at them. Yeah, because she's a mathematician. She calculates the trajectories and all the shit in her head instantaneously. So, you shoot, she knows exactly where to stand for you to make it for it to miss. Yeah, she shoots. It'll ricochet. And it, 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 you every move you make, she calculates your probabilities, of where you're going, what you're doing, how you can move, and shoots in ways that makes it feel like the sh- her shots are tracking you. Yeah, it, it, it's it's literally that's the, the comment he said. It says when you shoot at her, it's like she's standing still and you still you still can't hit her. Whereas when she fires back, it's like every single shot is a homing missile. <laughs> also, the shots in this game bounce off shit and include other yes. shots. Which gives Shiro even more brutal unfair advantages. Starts banking stuff around the corner and down the hall. <laughs> and Azuna's like, oh my god! He's like, okay, fine. Leap out a window. Ha ha! There's Jabril above me. Okay. They knew I was going to leap out this window. Fuck. And <laughs> Sora's across the map, <laughs> taking a long-range sniper shot from in utter silence at her. Which she manages to dodge, because she's cheating. Uh, <laughs> because what's going on is that they're monitoring the game from the outside and giving them giving Azuna information of where everybody is. Yeah. Um, and I, again, I don't want to spoil the rest of the match because it's fucking amazing. It is. It's some great action scenes that add that double wonderfully as comedy. Yeah, and. <laughs> some really good thinking too yeah it's just it's really it's clever the actual resolution is oh my god bullshit mathematics but uh yeah but it's fucking shiro so whatever (laughs) but the important bit is that azuna the one thing that they ask azuna very on is like how long has it been since you had fun playing the game and azuna's like i've never had fun playing a game too much hangs in these games for us to have fun like, you know, if I win, your people are doomed. If we win, if you if you win, our people are, we're, we're like, this could be at the end of everything for the Beastmen. We are in real trouble. Why, how could you possibly have fun in this situation? 
And she starts having fun towards the end because she's up against people against people who are legitimately challenging her and making the game entertaining. And Cheryl points out that yeah, that's not the point. We're not, no one's gonna get hurt from this re- result of us winning. I, I promise you. The beastmen are gonna be fine because Sora's plans are really good. <laughs> So, yeah, eventually they meet the actual leader of the Beastmen, the Shrine Maiden, um, who is, of course, a Kitsune. Because of course of she course is. Of course she is. <laughs> and she, Why would you think she'd be anything else? <laughs> right, exactly. And uh, so she basically, you know, she challenges Sora to a game because, you know, she's like, okay, yep, yeah, you guys play, played it perfectly. I, You know, the elves are going to be coming for us almost instantaneously now they know the secrets of the game. And the Flugel are here right now. I don't know why they, how they got here so quickly. And Jibril's like, oh, that's because I actually used to be a member of the Inner Council. And she's like, how? How did you... What? Win? Okay, never mind. So anyways, I'm challenging the game right now. And Sora's like, okay. So, uh, yeah. I'm tired of all these stupid machinations and all this stuff. It's going to be a coin flip. You call it in the air. I flip it. You call it in the air. <laughs> What do you want? What 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 do you what do you want? Okay, if we win, the beastmen get to keep all the all the, keep the rights and everything to their to self rule and all the stuff and all the stuff we have on the islands here. Yeah. And Sora's like, okay, uh, what we want is you know the beastmen beca- the your the you know, the East Alliance becomes part of uh, gets folded into our we you become part of our our, our kingdom. Not mentioning it'll race peace or anything. Just, and, and she's like, and he's like, he's very surprised. Like, you, for all your talk of wanting revenge, you want just to make to ensure your the beastmen's, you know, you know, their 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 autonomy. And she's like, yeah, I'm not an idiot, <laughs> because you know, eventually the the elves like are going to come for us. And if we've got the, we got guaranteed we've got guaranteed autonomy, that can't be broken unless we voluntarily give it up. She's clever. Hmm. So Sora flips in the air. She uses her beastman super senses to figure out how it's going to land, and she calls tails. And Sora shifts the block, the block in the stone path slightly, so it lands in the in the, the lands edge first in there. So it's edge. So go oh, look at this. I guess no one wins, or we both win. How do you want to play this? <laughs> and she's like, "Wait, what?" And he's like, "Seriously, like, do we both lose or do we both win?" If we both win, you keep your autonomous rights, and we form a new nation with us in charge. Yeah, but you guys get to keep your stuff. We're not trying to, like, you know, wipe you out. We want yeah. you on our side. <laughs> We're trying and, to form an alliance here. We're trying to form a federation, one might say. A united federation of cat girls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and... You know, like, I would never wipe out you, you this glorious land of cat, of cat girls. I mean, of animal girls. I mean, seriously, why would I do that? And of course, I didn't bet the uh, the race pieces. They should never be lost under any circumstances. They should be bet. <laughs> and he proceeds to explain. They he and Shiro proceed to explain. Their he's rationale. literally like he's, he's literally like, have none of you figured this out yet? Like okay, and, why are there sixteen? Ra- why are there sixteen sentient races? Why are there the race- chess pieces off in the distance? Why do the race pieces look like this? Like chess, like pieces. chess pieces. You're st- the whole point of Discord. The g- Discord is a game. The world is a game. God is the god of games. The whole point is to assemble to gather all the sixteen races together so that you can challenge Tet. That's how you win. The tenth pledge, the one that can't be enforced. Let's all have fun and play games together. Do you not understand Which, what this has been set up to be? Conquest is not the answer here. Alliance is. <laughs> yeah, you spent all this time fighting each other and trying to take each other's territory. You're trying to continue the war, and you haven't actually just sat down and thought about the situation. Like, you're continuing the war that Ted told you you were morons for doing. Yeah. You're just trying to you're just trying to continue the war by a new set of rules. Chet, what, Ted wanted to change the game. 
<laughs> I, you can see it like on on the shrine maiden's face. She's like, "Oh fuck." That makes way too much sense. <laughs> <laughs> and Jabril is just like, "Oh, oh, you are so awesome, dude." <laughs> <laughs> And St you can also see Steph is just like, oh my god, that's so, oh my god. Because Steph gets it. <laughs> and we cut away to uh, Kurumi and Field ta talking about basically, you know, their job is basically bring to basically bring down the, the El Elven Guard from inside. Yeah. And Phil it's like, she's, you know, I'm going to need your help, Phil. And Phil's like, absolutely. I'd fight the world for you, Kurumi. And it's like, okay. <laughs> Damn. But yeah, Kirby's like, I, I, th this is madness. But something about the way, something about Sora is convinced. Sora and Shira has convinced me that you know, we can't lose if we're if we do this right. Mm. And that is not exactly where the show ends. But the what what follows is essentially sequel bait. Yeah. That is effectively where the show. If the, sh the sequel bait didn't get dropped at the very end, that is where the show would end. Yeah. And I would still be angry that we're not getting another season. Yeah, considering they... You would be less pissed off, Eric. I would be less pissed off. I don't know, to be honest, because, I mean, they've set up the, the 16 races. We currently have two. Yeah. You know at that point there is a lot more material. Yeah. I'd be okay with that. I honestly, like, like I said I said to you guys on Saturday when we finished, I honestly think it was just the way that... um um. What words? Studio. Madhouse. Studio. Madhouse. 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 That's just the way that Madhouse were operating at that time. It was a case of, you know, one season, twelve episodes done. Oh, I mean, yeah. they they even done the same with um with One Punch Man. They farmed off season two to a new studio. Um, because I just don't think that as a studio they're interested in long-term show. They don't want a drag. Don't want a... Oh, yeah. Uh, Gav, uh, Gav, you're cutting out a bit. Yeah. I, I was wondering if that was just me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, boy. Hello? 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 Yeah, you're, uh, you're still... still... You're still borked, dude. Let me, let me check something here. Hang on. I want to see something. Hello? There you are. There we go. There we go. What did you get? Uh, you were talking about Madhouse, but you were cutting in and out during it. Yeah, so basically, it's just that the way I, uh, I expressed it on Saturday was that Madhouse do Madhouse. They do a 12-episode season, and they're done. That's it. They, they, you know, they've done it with One Punch Man. They farmed season two off to another studio. Um, they are not interested in having their version of One Piece. They don't want a Dragon Ball. They don't no. want... A Naruto or anything like that. Oh, no. They just want to do a show and move on. Oh sure, sure. I, I don't. I don't disagree. That doesn't mean I don't want more. <laughs> no, it's just a shame that they've. Uh, it's a shame that nobody's picked up to continue this. <coughs> but yeah, that's. Uh, so yeah, it ends with Sora basically saying to the Shrine Maiden, like, "Okay, you're a Shrine Maiden. That means you got a god, right?" And she's like, "Oh, okay." And she to basically call the spirit of the, her their their god into her body to talk to Shiro briefly, and that's basically where the show ends. The old Deus, who are like one of the higher ranks, they're, they are the they're they're the they're the exceed race rank number one. Yeah, the but they are gods. they are still a race that they will need to, you know, deal with. Yep, in theory. So yeah, and that's where the show ends, with them saying hi to hi to a god, that's not Ted. Yeah, I. Uh, it's frust. The ending is frustrating. Jesus Christ, is it frustrating? Yeah, I'd be a lot less frustrated if it hadn't been for the for the reveal of, of the old days. Honestly, there. Mm. Like I can understand. It's like yeah, the story could continue from here, but they've resolved an actual plot thread and haven't dropped like immensely sort of question like oh my god what the hell's happening thing it's literally end we're just sort of yeah there are further adventures that we could go into if we have time but it's not a oh god what the fuck 
as opposed to dropping the yeah. you know the old the old god on the, or in the there's like but wait, what? So yeah, uh, that's uh, no game to life. Uh, I really would love it if they got another season, but uh, it's pro- it's been four years. Now. It's it's not going to happen. I mean, Overlord didn't it eventually got a second season from Madhouse, so maybe, yeah. I mean, there's there is material for it, so it's possible, but I think it's very unlikely. You've got to think there's enough people asking for it that they may at least consider it, but it has been a while. Yeah. Well, we'll see. At any rate, I guess we'll move into final thoughts here so we can wrap mm. this up. Uh, Eric first, then Gav, then I'll bring up, that, bring up the rear since it was my recommendation. All right. So, um, one, first thing you're going to notice, this show is fucking gorgeous. <laughs> like, the, the art direction is great. Madhouse does, uh, does what Madhouse does as far as the quality of animation goes. Um, it, it's all... Familiar enough not to be absolutely bizarre, but still very creative in how it does things. I, I the show is gorgeous. Um, the characters are all likable and fun. Um, like there isn't a character I don't like in the show. They are just delightfully weirdo. They're they're delightful weirdos is what they are. Um, I think I Steph might be my favorite character. <laughs> it's possible. Or Jabril, honestly. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, something when talking about the show that always comes up is the cheesecake. Um, we discussed at the beginning to hear our, our, to hear my opinion on that, but just to reiterate, it's got some cheesecake, it's got some fan service, it's not near as bad as the internet would have you believe. Although, it is there if it squicks you out, so, you know. Um, but yeah, I really liked this show, and I hate Madhouse for not doing another season, grr. <laughs> <laughs> You still want to hear refuse to read the light novels. Screw you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll pretty much just echo what Eric's just already said there. It, you know, visually, yeah, it's it's great. Um, my only... I mean, it's well written, but the only drawback I have to it is... I honestly think that, again... And I know you, this is what you said, they're, they're invincible protagonists. It's the One Punch Man thing. But I think it's just a bit too much with these guys. There, there's no. The issue with it is there's no. There's never any. At least for me, there's never any um, feeling of, uh, of of threat. There's never any moment where these guys are actually at risk of losing because they've planned everything. They've worked everything out. They've. You know, they, they've seen schemes beyond schemes beyond schemes. Fucking Zinch is jealous of these guys. <laughs> um, and th- th- there's, like I said, the stakes never seem to be really that high, despite what they're telling us the stakes are. It's like, well, they're going to win, so it's just seeing how they do it. And it's never as interesting for me as, as, say, something like One Punch Man, which is, it's more about the side characters than it is what actually happens. Hmm. Um, it's all about watching the 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 lunatic ways they figure this stuff out, though. That that's something I really enjoy. Uh, it's it's kind of like a hidden ass pole, though. It's like just because you set it up doesn't mean it's not an ass pole. It's like that, you, that's you the co- definition of it not being an ass pole. You set it up. You you you've preempted it basically. Is what I'm saying. They've they've they've, they've put everything in. They they basically they've worked out the entire scheme and then built the story around it. And okay, I mean, yeah, and, but okay. it's just a bit—it's just a bit too much, you know. It's like I mean, look, one of the one of the shows we've been watching just as a, just as friends, we've been watching uh, Leverage. Yep, which is very similar in this. This you know, it's a group. Of, you know, in this case, it's con artists and all the rest of it with intricate plans. But sometimes they lose. Sometimes things don't go exactly as they plan. With this one, there's never a misstep. Everything is exactly as they planned. They have predicted everything. And I just for me, that's just a bit too much. Well, they, they, don't, they, they don't always have everything predicted is the thing. Uh, the, the chess game with Kurumi, they actually are, they are winging it for a good chunk of it. Mm. And they're figuring out things about the game they didn't realize. Like, they did not realize a lot of, like, 
the rules. They went in assuming it was basically chess, and they, every, it kept changing on them as they realized more and more different things about it was not working the way they thought it did, and they adapted yeah. to that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not spoiling that, but yeah. <laughs> right. Um, I uh, wish that tactic worked in 40k. <laughs> Uh-huh. But yeah, it, okay. Look, it, look, it is a good show. That is my one and only problem, and it is a nitpick. Just for me, it just didn't feel, you know, honest. But it's still a good show. It's still worth, definitely worth, worth a watch. Um, it's only twelve episodes, unfortunately, and that, and I mean that. Uh, yeah, recommend it. Yep, I as I I adore the show. Uh, my one real complaint, my one major complaint about it, honestly, is the, the fan service doesn't bother me. The fact that Shiro gets pulled into it is the one thing I have a real complaint about. I really wish they didn't sexualize Shiro ever. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, and it's a case of, yeah, there are scenes where they're in the bath, the bath and they're having a bath and what have you. Whatever. That doesn't phase, it wouldn't bother me if they weren't, oh, it's like, a naked 11-year-old in the bath is not inherently sexualizing her. But they are sexualizing her in some of those scenes, and it's like, I wish yeah. they do that. That's my one complaint about the show. Uh, visually, well, that and the fact that the, the ending is a little, but, 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 God, I, ah! Screw you, Madhouse. <laughs> but uh, the show's gorgeous. Uh, the dialogue is just razor sharp. And funny um yes i actually agree with i gab i do mostly i actually would if this show wasn't as funny as it is i think i'd agree with you about the protagonist being too overpowered mm. and the way they handle things would be a problem but it's a comedy at heart and yeah. that changes the rules for me uh on that sort of thing because watching them watching how they dismantle the game is entertaining himself and also the fact that it's what's going on is nine times out of ten fucking hilarious means I don't care that the stakes aren't real. <laughs> mm. Because what's actually at stake is, can we, can, can, is, is the contest entertaining in and of itself? Yes. Is what's going on funny? Yes. Uh, and do we care about these characters as people? And the answer to that is, yeah. They, like, they, for being an over, for being overpowered, broke, you know, unfair protagonist in this world, you still man, they still manage to make Shiro and Sora compelling, likable characters you get invested in. Like you know, that takes doing. Uh, the ep- you know the episode where Sora's got his existence is on the line. Uh, Again, yeah, we know that he's going to win because et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the moment when you when Shiro realizes that he's gone, it's still heartbreaking mm. because of her reaction to it. And there's real you feel real empathy about this when you know, Sora reveals his plan about wanting to get how he wants to get Kurumi on his side, because this plan doesn't he would never be able to attempt this plan if he didn't actually have empathy for Kurumi and her what she's thinking. Mm-hmm. This is it's the reveal that Sora is more than what you think he is at first. That yeah, he can be cold and callous and petty and a jerk, but he genuinely cares about humanity and helping the people he cares about and he has empathy for his opponents even, you know, when he's mocking them, even though he's usually mocking them for being idiots. Even though they're generally not idiots, they're just not as smart as he and Shiro. And mm. not being smart as Shiro is not being an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's an unfair scale. So yeah, I the fact that they get get they got me invested in these two overpowered yet god damn they are broken people. Yeah. <laughs> There's an unfortunate line from the light novels that I've heard I've heard people mention and I've seen it, which I wish was I had made it into the series. Which is after Kermi gets Shiro's memories, she comments, "How the hell did he stay sane with all he went through?" Mm. 
because we get glimpses of their of you know Sh- Shiro and Sora's life that are alluding to exactly how bad shit was with their family. Mm. Like they just, they mentioned repeatedly that Sora is doing everything he has to say the things that his parents want him to hear, to smile, to, to he's doing this to placate them, to make them happy, which is an indication of a how of you know it's classic indication of, you know, just like an incredibly distant and disapproving parent parents. Because you've got this super bright kid who's doing anything he can to get the, get them on his get get them to acknowledge him, and you're watching him sort of dancing and smiling, sort of do sort of in front of them saying things, and they are ignoring him completely in the scene. You're yeah, talking. it's not so much like what what would be con- typically considered abuse, but it's um, excess by, it's um, it's neglect. Yeah, they're not beating them; they're just ignoring them. Because they're not living up to what their their views of what their potential are. Because they're not good with because Sora and Shiro are not good with people. And that was what leads them to sort of turning and cur- curling in on themselves as and isolating themselves from humanity. And yeah, like I, I, I that that bit of holy crap, they went through like that is something that like it's not obvious from the show, which is a little unfortunate, I think. That mm. I, there's it, there are little nuggets I think that I I know about them that I from reading stuff about the show that's well, in the light novels which I really wish made it into the show. Well, one of the recurring things that they do mention a few times is when Shiro and Sora first met. Right. And this wasn't actually as you know uh, Shiro being brought home as the new you know his little sister. She was like four when they first met. Three or four, yeah. She was in. She, and she's. Uh, they are brother and sister, but she was in this like institute for bringing out her genius, which is really fucking weird, man. Yeah. And he. They. They walk in, and she meets her for the first time when she's four, and this is the whole thing. So like, like he's he's been doing this and playing the part and being the good the good little boy. And she takes one look at him and sees straight through him. Yep. Yep. And, and she says, you really are empty, aren't you? And he's like, oh my yeah. god, you're awesome. Yeah, and it's the, from that point onwards, it's like, like the first word she ever says to him is, uh, sorry, the first words he ever says to her is like, oh, you want to play a game? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. <laughs> from then on. So yeah, I, it, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a, so that's the thing is, this show is on the surface really is a trashy comedy it is, and on the, that's what it is on the surface. There's a lot more heart and depth to it if you actually look at it. If you want to look for it, basically, right? Yeah. yeah. Not quite the level that Shinemeta had, um, mm. yeah. but yeah. So I, I I I definitely think that I I highly recommend this show if you can if you can get past the Shiro fan service basically. Uh, For all our caveats about it, it's, it's not, irritating it's not when it. it shows up, but it doesn't show up that often. If you go it's, into it thinking it's going to be some fucking over-the-top lollipop bullshit, and you watch the show, and you go in with that mindset, you will finish the show going, really, is that it? Is that all that what? All that fuss? Yeah. There's, I'm not saying it's not there, but it's nowhere near as bad as anyone's making out. Yes. It has an undeserved reputation, is what we're saying. Yes. Like, like there are much worse shows out there, trust us. Well, yeah, but again, the reputation came about because there are elements of it there. Yeah. That it, uh, We will never argue that It that was they are popular there. and had elements of it there. Yes. And therefore they got... that. That's what people concentrated on. But it is a much better show than people give it credit for, is what, I'm, what we're all saying, I think. Yeah. Well, now... Um, yes. It, it, was, it was the... The show du jour when it first came out, if oh, I remember sure. correctly. It was very popular because I you you watch it, you understand why it's popular. It's just that you know people look back and they're like, "Ew!" And it's like it's not that bad. It's not as bad as you guys are making it. Like, yes, there are some issues. There are issues with a lot of shows. There are worse issues with a lot of popular shows, guys. Mm. At any rate, though, uh, we should probably wrap things up here. We've been going for a while on a twelve episode. Yeah. <laughs> So that's going to do it for this week, guys. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, sorry for the technical issues in the middle. Uh, that's just 
it happens sometimes doing things over the internet. Um, so that's going to do it for this week. Eric, you have the next selection. Have you decided what we're doing next? I think we're going to do Mob Psycho 100, simply because it's been on my list long enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually going to be doing a show none of us have seen. Yeah. Heard a lot about it, but, um, yeah. So this should be fun. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys had fun, and we will be back uh, when we finish Mob Psycho 100, which won't be for a little while. Gav's going to be out of town for a little bit, so... Yeah. I'm going on a holiday! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> awesome. Blackjack bookers for all, or at least for Gav. Maybe. <laughs> I know a place. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.